Blessed Sunday morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service this morning, and we thank the Lord for giving us another wonderful opportunity to worship Him in spirit and in truth. So let us welcome the presence of our whole Holy Almighty Father in our midst as we come together giving praise and thanks to God for all the wonderful things that He has done in our lives. Not only today, but even for the past couple of days, weeks, and even years. And continue to do mighty and wonderful things in our lives. So once again, good morning. We would like to recognize and welcome in our midst our guest, um, Please uh, stand as you, as I mentioned your name to be recognized. Reverend Rene Padrilanan. Hi, Pastor. Okay. He is the OQO president of the United Metropolis Conference of the Middle Luzon jurisdiction. Uh, with him is or his sister, Adelette Padrilanan Moreno from Antipolo City. Welcome po. And also, uh, friends, uh, Dabs Liban Jr. and Yolanda Liban from Quezon City. Thank you for joining us in our worship today. And I think the very reason why they come is to visit their uh, brother, Adral uh, Aldrin. No. Okay, so, and also we would like to welcome the Ninongs and Ninangs of the children that we are about to baptize today. May we request all the godparents of um, Aurora, Amber, and Rafael to please stand and also the mother who is present today. Please stand, all the Ninongs and Ninangs. Rise. Thank you. And also, welcome home, uh, Timela Ventura, joining us today. Welcome home. So let us sing. Uh, uh, mga bisita? Do we have other? Oh, yes. Oh, katapat na nay Alice. Okay, welcome, Ati Telma. So let us sing our welcome greeting song. There's a welcome here, there's a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here, hallelujah, there's a welcome here, there's a welcome here, there's a Christian welcome here, we welcome you. Once again, welcome and may you feel the, the warmness and uh, our love as you come and join us in this worship service. We also would like to greet those who are celebrating their birthday today and next week. May we know if we have, or na ba mga mag-birthday? We have a list uh, printed in our chamber, so... We greet those who are celebrating their birthdays as well as those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries. So, anyway, so let us extend our birthday greetings as we sing our birthday song. Once again, as of your birthday, once again, a time. From Jesus, He has given you one more year. Happy time, your birthday. Happy time this year. What a loving gift from Jesus, He has given you one more year. Now let us um, please join me as we browse our chambers for some announcement. First, um, still we are in the celebration of the membership renewal month. 
As we all know that the month of February is membership renewal. And in our church, we add leadership. So membership and leadership month. And uh, we also would like, in celebration of this, last Sunday we have discussed and learned about the responsibilities and duties as member of this body of Christ. For our cup, uh, upcoming events today, the mission and evangelism team proceed to UCCP Kabantian for evangelism and go for training. So it's a whole day activity and so we pray, we ask the body of Christ to uh, extend our prayers and support to the team as they conduct the go for training. Also tomorrow, starting tomorrow is the third session of the Newman Academy. Uh, it's a five-day session series of lectures. Uh, we have already finished the Christian Foundations. And then uh, last month, we have the Old Testament survey. So let us continue to um, bring all these concerns and also upcoming events of our church for the success of all these activities and programs. Also, uh, reminders to all our conference delegates, this time because of the pandemic, because of this new normal, but thanks God because now we are able to hold a, a hybrid, actually, um, session face-to-face -face at the same time online. So there will be two venues for our SMDC annual session this coming February 17 to 19. First venue is for those coming from Galidiscon and Sidiscon, so meeting place will be at UCCP Digos Rizal. And for those coming from Central District and uh, Highland con uh, District, uh, we will meet at your uh, Broken Shark College. So the activity, the session will start at 9 o'clock in the morning up to 4 o'clock in the afternoon only. We would like to inform the congregation that our church is offering or opening work opportunities for the position of finance officer and church office and human resource head. So for those of you, if you find yourself you are qualified for this position, please um, apply and you may submit your application letter and resume to our church office and address that to our uh, human resource head, Ms. Fordeliza Adeline. For those um, of you, especially uh, you have friends or mga kaila that uh, has no access have no access of internet or Wi-Fi connection, you may introduce or tell them that we have our radio ministry program every Sunday at 11 to 12 noon. And I was so amazed to know that last week when we, were, we visited Tikulon in Malita, we found out that kusog di ay ang signal o kusog ang radio dito. We are about to stop the, actually the ministry program. And then all the lay preachers there and our members, they said, Pastor, kusug kaayo diri ang inyong kwan ba? Kanang inyong pagsimba? Kanang inyong radyo ukay? Nagtagapaminog yun sila dito sa uh, Galidiscon area. So we praise God because as we always, um, how to evaluate actually the radio program unlike Facebook account na nag -live ta, we can somehow see how many viewers we have. But for, for radio program, ministry program, 
ato na siguro ng undangon kay wala man tay maano feedback kung naabay na minaw o wala ba si kita lang then then only to find out nga only to find out nga na agyud di ay sa mga tanang mga taga Galidiskon tigpaminaw sa atong radio ministry program for other concerns so please um, find time to browse and um, bring with you copy of our chambers for you to be updated as to the life and ministries of our church. Now let us come and prepare our hearts as we come to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Shall we all rise? By the grace of God, we are called to this place. We are summoned to worship with joy and thanksgiving. By the grace of God, we are united in common mission. We are summoned to bring our whole selves to the work of worship. By the grace of God, we are welcomed as just as we are, beautiful and broken. We are summoned to give praise to our Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Come, let us worship the Triune God. pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, thank you for this privilege and the opportunity to come together once again here in your sanctuary to worship you and praise you. As we gather today, may we truly experience you, O God. We pray that you fill our hearts, our mind, and our soul. Come into our midst, grace us with your loving presence, from the beginning of this service down to its end. Let your love flow to us and through us. Bless everyone and every family represented today. All this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
please be seated. Let us attend to the word of the Lord when he says, The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, in silence, let us confess our sins to God and to others. Having confessed our sins, now listen to the wonderful news. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. In Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me all. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me my great salvation. As forgiven people of God, let us approach his holy presence in prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for saving our souls, for making us whole, and for giving to us your great salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. We come to you this morning in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. We come not as strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens in the household of God. We come because, and we're, because we are your children and because you are our Father. Thank you for making us part of your family, and as a result, we have a wonderful prospect of living with you through all eternity. We thank you today for your faithfulness and your mercy and grace. You're always there when we need you, Lord. You've never turned us away, and you've never failed us. You've never failed to fulfill your promises to us and to your world. In our troubles and trials, and when the road seemed long, you've been right there with us and you help us through, and we give you thanks and praise today. Thank you, Lord, for all you have done for us, but most of all, we thank you for who and what you are. Lord, we admit that we are all busy with the business of living in the here and now. We have jobs, we have families, we have responsibilities, we get involved in all kinds of things. Some 
of vital importance, and some of them are only trivial. Lord, help us to put first things first. Help us, O oh Lord, to keep our priorities straight. Help us to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, and let the other things fall into their rightful places. Help us, O oh Lord, to make the right choices that will count for eternity. We pray for the needs of your people. We've all come with individual and very personal needs. Only you know about the struggles and burdens each one are facing. But one thing is very assuring, when you invite us to bring everything to you in prayer. So, we each reach out to you, and we know that you're already reaching out to us. Thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs this morning and giving us the assurance that you are answering our prayers. Aside from those concerns, we also pray for those whose lives have touched us and those who are in pain, those who are ill, those who grieve. May we touch their lives not only through our prayers, but through our lives and actions as well. We pray for our community and those that are all around us. We pray for our government officials, all our leaders, especially that national election is coming. We pray for your wisdom and leading. We pray for all the candidates and voters to be wise and choosing leaders, to vote with their conscience and not because they are being dictated and forced or influenced by others. And also mindful of the fact that what most important is not the popularity, but the sincerity and purity in their heart to serve your people. We ask for your divine intervention and help your people to choose leaders that will certainly do your will and not their own selfish interest only. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayers. Lord, bless and we pray this gathering of your people that we may grow and flourish in your love and grace for the purpose to which you have called us. Guide us, bless us, uplift us, and hold us, for we are your children called to our purpose in your world. Hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden in our hearts. We pray, O oh Lord, for the success of the evangelism and go for training today at UCCP Kabantian. And also we pray for the success of the face-to-face -face and online annual conference of the South Mindanao District Conference this coming February 17 to 19. We ask for your wisdom and the leading of the Holy Spirit. We pray for our pastor as she preaches your word today. We ask for your divine anointing on her and the word she speaks, and may we all have open and obedient hearts. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of this church. Amen and amen. God can make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. reverence to God for the reading of his word. May we stand.
I'll be reading from 1 Peter 2, verses 4 to 5, and it says, As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless us as we meditate on his words. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be.
Blessed Sunday, everyone. We thank the Lord for the choir, for the message in song, for indeed God is holy, Lord God Almighty, worthy is the Lamb, who is worthy of all our praises, honor, and thanksgiving. We're also grateful to the Lord for, during this pandemic, this choir, mga potential singers of our church, uh, has been organized. So, pila lang sila kabuok, pero power kayo ilang tingog by the grace of God. So, we are so thankful to the Lord for uh, there are talents that are and potentials that are uh, discovered during this pandemic. Today, we will be pondering upon how we are as a church in this present age and what God intends us to be according to the scriptures. According to J.C. Ryle, nothing, whatever, whether great or small, can happen to a believer without God's ordering and permission. There is no such thing as chance, luck, or accident in the Christian journey through this world. All is arranged and appointed by God, and all things are working together for the believer's good. In chapter 1 of First Peter, Peter stated the glorious riches that God's chosen people, the Jewish Christians, who were driven out of Jerusalem and scattered in the provinces of Asia Minor, in the provinces of Pontus in Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Many first century followers of Christ were suffering and being abused and persecuted for believing in and obeying Jesus. Beginning in Jerusalem at the hands of their Jewish brothers, the persecution spread to the rest of the world, wherever Christian gathered. It climaxed when Rome determined to rid the empire of the Christ ones. Those followers and believers of Jesus Christ were then called Christ ones, those who do not bow to Caesar and bow to to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Peter knew persecution firsthand. Beaten and jailed, he had been threatened most of the time. He had seen fellow Christians die and the church scattered, but he knew Christ and nothing could shake his confidence in his risen Lord. So Peter wrote to the church scattered and suffering for the faith, giving them comfort and hope and urging those people, those believers, to continue in their loyalty to Christ. Peter begins by thanking God for salvation. He explains to his readers that trials will refine their faith. It, through indeed, when we have met trials, problems along the way of life, we can truly uh, we, our lives are living testimonies of how good God is, even through the problems that we've been through. They should believe in spite of their circumstances. For many in past ages, believe in God's plan of salvation. Even the prophets of old wrote about it but didn't understand it. But now salvation has been revealed in Christ Jesus. In response to such a great salvation, Peter commands them to live holy lives, to reverently fear and trust God, to be honest and loving, and to become like Christ. In the first part of chapter 2, they were given an admonition 
when Peter said, Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. So they were therefore admonished to live all the negativities, all the old person that they were in the past. As Second Corinthians 5.17 tells us that if anyone is in Christ, we are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And in verse 2, they were also given the inspiration to be like newborn babies, crave for pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So they were also given the challenge to be like babies who are really uh, longing for pure milk so that they will grow thereby. And in verse 4, there is now this invitation for us to come to him, the living stone. So the question is, to whom do we come? Of course, to the living stone, Jesus Christ, the chosen and precious cornerstone upon whom the church is built. Since ancient times, builders have used cornerstones in their construction projects, and I believe this church has also a cornerstone uh, as uh, people started to, to construct this church. A cornerstone was the principal stone, usually placed at, at the corner of a building to guide the workers in their, in their work. The cornerstone was usually one of the largest, the most solid, and the most carefully constructed of any uh, parts in a building. A cornerstone was used as the foundation and standard upon which a building was constructed. Once in place, now once the cornerstone is in place, it became the basis for determining every measurement in the remaining construction. Everything was aligned to the cornerstone. In addition, if remove, if the cornerstone is removed, the entire structure could collapse. The Bible describes Jesus as the cornerstone that his church would be built upon. He is, found, he is the very sure foundation on which we stand. As the cornerstone of the building of the church, Jesus is our standard of measure and alignment. In verse 4, Peter identified Jesus, the Lord, as the living stone. He is living because he was dead and yet he resurrected, and now is, he is alive forevermore. He is the cornerstone of the house of God. So as we come to him, as we are invited to come to him, the living stone, we come to align into his likeness. We come to align into his character. We come to align into his nature. We come to align into his kind of heart full of love and compassion forgiving, gentle, humble, faithful until the end. Now, Peter also likened us as living stones. Like Jesus, Christians are living because we were once dead in sin. We were once dead spiritually because of sin, but have been made alive by God's grace through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we may die physically, but our resurrection is already secured by God's promise. The foundation of God's building is His Son, Jesus Christ, the living stone. And we as believers, as we come to Jesus, we are the living stones. And we, as we place our lives upon the foundation of our faith, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. The living stone is precious to those who believe. And yet we know for a fact that 
When the Magi learned about the, the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, they went to worship him and brought gifts to him. On the other hand, Herod, upon learning the birth of Jesus Christ, he was planning to kill him. That's what it says here. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans, but rejected by humans, because there are still not many, uh, there are still many people who reject Jesus Christ and still did not believe in him. So though they are our mission field, they are the mission field of the living stones, the church. So Christians are like living stones set aside for a specific work. God is currently building us into a spiritual house, a dwelling place for himself. For what purpose are we like living stones? So we might ask. Number one, as living stones, we are to be used to, build, to be built into a spiritual house. If we notice that when one is, when, when a building is uh, being constructed, they are using stone, from the biggest stone to the tiniest grain of stone or sand. And everyone is significant in building up the build in building up the construction. Likewise, we here in the church as living stones, we are also each one is also significant in building up the body of Christ. It says here in verse five, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house. Living stones are not loose stones lying around nga kanang nagtagsa tagsa no. But a building, para mahimo siyang ligon, ang stones have to be uh, kanang gigamit yun siya nga interconnected with one another so that the church would really stand strong. So living stones are built on the living stone who is Jesus Christ with other living stones to build the house. Why is it uh, why do we mean that it is the church? Because Peter says it is impossible to fulfill God's purpose for, for your life as a Christian outside of the communion of the believers, outside the church, and outside the household of God. We cannot serve to the very purpose to which God has called us outside the church. So this is the transforming grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is a living stone that reproduces himself in those who believe in him. So we are living stones in Christ. For we believe that the Lord is not building just a house, just a prayer, a place for prayer, or a place of worship. It is a spiritual house for divine habitation for divine dwelling of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church buildings often have signs to identify them as church, no naagi panangalan ang ato adiri wa patay pangalan sa atong church. Wala pay nakabutang din ha na unsa ni uh, United Church of Christ in the Philippines. Maybe that that will be the project of the next ecclesiastical year. But the church is not a building, we know that. It is the people of God in Christ. The church is not where we go, it is what we are. We were made a living stone by the living stone to be connected to other living stones. So we are connected with each other as we build up the, as we build up the church. As Ephesians 2, 19, 22 says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints or believers and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built 
together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. The Lord indwells in every believer. This personal gift is, is for us to grow and for us to be to edify one another and to us for us to strengthen one another in the faith. We are we do not live as an island. We do not live alone. We live with one another for the very purpose of edifying one another. As together we we are workers in kingdom building. We are living stones that are being built up into a spiritual house for God's glory and honor. So nothing for man's glory, nothing for man's honor, but for God alone. And the second purpose, while we are, why we are like living stones, is that we are to be a holy priesthood. Christians are a holy priesthood. We are living stones being built up as a spiritual house. Then we are a holy priesthood to offer sac spiritual sacrifices to God. In verse 5 is one of the two places in the New Testament where Christians are called a priesthood. The, in the Old Testament, the priesthood consisted of consecrated men. The New Testament teaches the priesthood of all believers. Every believer is a priest before God for himself and every other believer. Old Testament priests were chosen by God, not self-appointed, and they were chosen for a purpose, to serve God with their lives by offering up sacrifices. The priesthood served as a picture or type of the coming ministry of Jesus Christ, a picture that was then no longer needed once his sacrifice on the cross was completed. When the thick temple veil that covered the doorway to the Holy of Holies was torn in two by God at the time when Jesus died on the cross at Calvary, God was indicating that the Old Testament priesthood was no longer necessary. By when the veil was torn when Jesus was hanging on the cross at Calvary, it was telling us that all believers, all followers, all who are embracing the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ now have direct access to the throne of God, not only the priests, but all believers, all followers. We now have the access, direct access to the throne of God in prayer, in communion, and as we personally talk to him, and as we intimately have uh, communication with the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. Now people could come directly to God through the great high priest who is Jesus Christ. So wala na itong mga high priest in the Old Testament because the high priest now is Jesus Christ. There are now no earthly mediators between God and man as existed in the Old Testament priesthood. Our text today speaks of two aspects of the priesthood of all believers. The first is that believers are privileged. We are privileged not only nga naatay mga privileges as member of the church nga maka-discount ta sa hospital, atong mga anak maka-discount sa mga tuition sa uh, mga UCCP related institutions and other benefits that we get as members of the church but to be chosen by God to be a priest was a privilege all believers have been chosen by God a chosen generation his own special people according to verse 9 in the Old Testament tabernacle and temple there were places where only the priest could go into the holy of holies behind a thick veil only the high priest could go and that only once a year on the Day of Atonement when he made a sin offering on behalf of all the people. But as mentioned above, because of Jesus' death on the cross of Calvary, all believers now have direct access to the throne of God through Jesus Christ, 
our great high priest. According to Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. What a privilege to be able to access the very throne of God directly. Not through an earthly priest. So what a privilege, especially for us who, who were once not a people, not his people. Who were once outsiders, who are Gentiles without hope. Destined for destruction because of our sins. And now have direct access to the throne of God's grace. What a privilege indeed to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The second aspect of the believer's priesthood is that we are chosen for a purpose to offer up spiritual sacrifice. As Hebrews 13, 15, 16, the fruit of our lips, now giving thanks to his name. And to proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his wonderful light. Thus, by both life and by word, our purpose is to serve God. And as we serve God, as we sit here to worship the Lord, we are just like coming to a, to a gas station to refuel so that after having been refueled, we can move forward to the mission field as we do about our respective responsibilities as children of God, as people of God, to go out and proclaim the good news of salvation to people everywhere so that many would believe and there would be many who will be added to the living stones being built up for the house, for the temple of God. So God has called us to serve him from our hearts by first of all offering our lives as living sacrifices. So believers then are the living stones of the church that Jesus promised to build. As living stones, we have new life in Christ Jesus. We embrace the responsibilities with joy as we do about our part in kingdom building. As integral parts of the building of God, we also are secured in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Sa ay na mga word nga mga insecure sa mga relationships, no? Na ay mga insecurities in our relationships. Usahay. But we know that when we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, our relationship with Him is secured because we have a faithful God. And as the master builder, God places His living stones just where He wants us to be. So you are here because that's where God wants you to be. Or wherever you are, that's where God wants you to be. Kanang giingon nila na bloom where you are planted. Grow where you are planted. Bear fruit where you are planted. Be a blessing where you are. So we are here because God, that's where God wants us to be, to serve, to shine as lights, to be the salt of the earth, to bring flavor in relationships among brethren, and to proclaim the good news of salvation. As living stones, we are connected to one another in the body of Christ to support one another, to strengthen one another, and not to quarrel with one another, to edify and encourage one another in our faith and in our service. Peter goes on to describe the function of the living stones, that we are also here to declare the praises of him who called us out of the darkness of sin into the light of life and glory in verse 9. This is now the job description of each one of us as living sto a living stone. We are a speaker of praise. We are a declarer of truth and love and light. Are we? What ba ta ni apil-apil aning mga mga lalis sa mga 
kinsay suportahan nga kandidato no di lang ta mag-apil apil ana ato lang iampo kod na giyahan ta tagaan ta wisdom sa Ginoo di ta mag-away no? the spiritual house god is building is designed for his glory and we the living stones glorify the lord in all that we do may we all find delight in knowing that we are here in church to be living stones eager to grow and serve active and alive in god's work not contented with just sitting down but volunteering ourselves to the work of god engaging in the mission and ministry of the church committed and devoted to the one living stone who is jesus christ may we all go out from this place with refreshed devotion and commitment to our one and only foundation of the church who is jesus christ amen Mark, Mark 12, 41-44 says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasure. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a fraction of a penny. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has put more into that treasure than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had. Just like the poor widow, let us give our all to God. As we partner with him in the proclamation of the gospel and building up the church, let us now bring our tithe, pledge, and offering.
Father, we praise and thank you for your generous towards us. As we give our tithes, pledges, and offerings, we pray that you bless the ministries and programs that this offering supports for the furtherance of your kingdom. May it give glory and honor to your name. In Jesus' we pray, amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, today we are about to celebrate the Holy Baptism. And let us hear once again what Jesus has said. Go forth and make all nations my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And be assured, I am with you always to the end of time. Charlene, you have brought your children here desiring for them to receive the Christian baptism. And let us be reminded that there are actually or two essential meaning or basic meanings behind the baptism of children. First, because we believe that God is the source of all our love. And so, as parents, we acknowledge God's loving work of creation and offer the gratitude of our hearts for the happiness and hope which has come into our lives by the presence of these children. Another and second basic meaning of this infant or child baptism is because we bring these children into a new environment, the environment of a loving, sharing community whose Lord is Jesus Christ. In baptizing these children, let us be reminded what Jesus did when he said to his disciples, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for to such belong the reign of God. And for those who will not accept these children, they will not enter into the reign of God. And so I have a few questions to you, Charlene, being the parent of these children. In bringing these children here to be baptized, do you confess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you accept for yourself and for these children the covenant of God being assured that God loves your children and desires to deliver them from all kinds of harms, temptations, and to live a life under the control of the Holy Spirit? Do you promise to provide for your children instructions in prayer, teach them the Holy Bible, read the Bible with them, so that they will grow and also be nurtured and mature in their faith? also are the Ninongs and the Ninangs. As I have said yesterday, you were so privileged. You were so privileged to be chosen among the many friends of these parents of the children that we are about to baptize. You were chosen and privileged to be chosen to become part of the growth of the children. And so with that, do you Parents or godparents solemnly promise to use your special relationship and influence for these children committed to your loving care. They may be taught aright and be brought up faithfully, endeavoring to live as pleasing in the Lord. Your response? Yes, we do. I do. Amen. May I request Charlene to please come up the altar with the kids.
And also we ask the elders to please come forward as we extend our hand of blessing to this mother and the children. Let us pray. Let us extend our heart, hands. Loving and merciful Father, we dedicate these children to you, O oh Lord, with a powerful reminder from your word that you truly love these children and that you even make a promise that by not accepting these children, O oh Lord, we will not even enter into your kingdom. We ask Heavenly Father to bless these children, their parents, and may they be nurtured and grow in their faith in you. Allow this family, O oh Lord, to receive your love, receive your blessing, and most especially, O oh Lord, help the parents of these children with the guidance as well of the godparents who in one way or another have expressed and signified, O oh Lord, their promise to be of great help in nurturing the fate of these children. And so we dedicate this, O oh Lord, these children unto your holy presence. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Aurora Amber Wayan, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine upon you and be gracious to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Rafael Lucas, Rafael Uwayan, I baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord bless you and keep you always, not only today, but for the rest of your life. Amen and amen. Okay, let us face the congregation. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, as member of this congregation, receive these children into the love and care of this congregation, and will you promise to walk with them and in the joys, tasks, and challenges ahead? If you accept this task, and do you promise, you express your answer by standing and giving a clap of praise to the Lord. Charlene, face them. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Father, thank you for the life of Amber and Raphael, and even Charlene and Jason, for this family, O oh Lord. We bring and we lift them up to your care and love in the name of Christ our Lord and Savior the head of this church and the perfecter of our faith the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord lift up his countenance and grant you peace now and always amen and amen Brothers and sisters in the Lord, now let us accept our new member of this church, Aurora Amber Uwayan and Lucas Rafael Uwayan. A little children, you face the congregation. You face the congregation. Brown and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. 
brown and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. God bless you. Thank you. You may go back to your feet. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as members of the church, we are here like living stones who must be always in alignment with the living stone, Jesus Christ, who is our sure foundation, the precious cornerstone of our faith. And let us now refresh our loyalty and devotion to Jesus Christ, the head and foundation of the church, the solid rock to which we stand as we sing our hymn of hope. us pray. Heavenly Father, we are amazed and deeply grateful to know that the Lord Jesus, who is the chief cornerstone of the church and the precious foundation stone upon whom our faith is founded. We thank you, Father in heaven, for securing us salvation and eternal life in Jesus Christ, so that by faith in him, Lord, we might become living stones significant and useful for building the body of Christ. Help us live our life, Lord, in such a way that honors you. And Father, what a privilege and joy it is to be living stones for you. Thank you that as part of Jesus' body, we are members of the church and part of his royal priesthood which has been built up over centuries of time into the living temple of God. We pray, Father in heaven, that you would empower us, that each one of us, Lord, would be useful for your work for king of kingdom building. We pray, Father in heaven, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to be upon us, O God, that we may become bold and courageous to go out and be your witnesses to people everywhere. We pray, Father in heaven, that may we, we will be able to live up to the call to which you have given us, O Lord, as your children, 
as your people. Use us in the work you have prepared for us to do, and may we be faithful in carrying out the good works that you have prepared for us for your praise and glory. We pray also for people kneeling before you and all those who are standing before you with their concerns, with their thanksgiving, their petitions, and their supplications. Thank you, Father in heaven, to, for listening to their prayers and granting them favors, Lord, for their prayers. And as you dismiss us, Father God, from this place of worship, may we go out joyful and courageous to be the light of the world and to be the salt of the earth. We pray, Father in heaven, that we will also become diligent children like living stones as we do our part and our responsibilities as the body of Christ. And now may the grace of God uphold you, the peace of God surround you, the love of God flow through you, the strength of God protect you, the hope in God inspires you and bring you, you safely through this day and all the days ahead. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.